it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day nine of my 2021 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using a whole ton of Lawn Fawn stamps, including Perfectly Wicked, Furry and Bright, Joy to All, Holiday Helpers, Cheery Christmas, and Bah Humbug. I've stamped my images out with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with the standing cat on the far left, and I'm going to color him with C0 and C1, just as a kind of like an undercoat. I wanted him to be a black and white kitty, so I'm just adding a bit of shading to his body so that the white parts will be shaded. It's just easier for me to do those first and then add in the dark patches after. And for those, I'm going to use C3, C5, and C7. So I'm gonna start with the C7 and give this little guy some black ears. I'm also gonna give him some black patches that are gonna cover his eyes and I'll do some black down his back and his tail and a little bit on the undersides of his arms. And then I'll grab the C5 and to begin to blend that out. Uh, the C7 is quite dark, so I wanna go over that edge very carefully and make sure that everything is nice and smooth and I don't end up with any harsh lines. I'm gonna stop before I get to the tip of his tail so I can leave a little white space there. And then I'm gonna take the C3 and kind of sketch in how far I want those black patches on his face to go. I want to leave a strip of white down the center that's gonna cover his nose and mouth. Also using that lightest shade over the eyes is going to make sure that they are still nice and prominent so you can see his features and he doesn't get completely lost. I want him to have a white belly, so I'm just creating a little curved area around that part of his body. And then I will be doing a second layer on all of my images off screen, just to save a little time in the video. I'm gonna go back to my C0 and just use that to bridge the transition area between the C3 and the white space. And then in a second, you'll be able to see what that second layer looks like. It's just a little bit more saturated and a little bit more smooth. So I'm gonna move on to my next kitty and I'm gonna work on his white areas. And I'm gonna use E40 and E41 to give this guy a little bit of a different look. And um, just make sure that everything is nicely blended before I move into his darker patches. And for those, I'm going to use E23, E25, and E27. So I'm taking that E27 and mapping out the areas of the body that I want to be brown. So I'm doing a little bit of a patch on just the right side of his face, and then I will give him a, just a brown ear on the left, and then I'm gonna give him some patches down his arms, and on his back and his tail. So I'm blending that out with the E25, and then I'll come in with the E23 and kind of finish off the patch on his face and just blend out the edges of the other patches so that everything is nice and smooth. I left a little white tip on his tail as well, and then connected the, um, the front leg that's down with his back area as well. And then I'm gonna go in and just give him a little brown tip on the ear on the left. And then I'll move on to my third kitty, and this one I'm gonna do the white areas with W00 and W1. So each one will have their own unique look, even though they all have white patches, they're all in different tones that kind of match with the rest of their coloring. So this could be really cute just left white, but I decided to give him some little tiger prints. So I'm gonna add in the W3 and W5, and I'm gonna do a little pattern on his forehead Instead of leaving the center part white, I decided to make that gray. So I'm gonna bring that down in kind of like a triangle on his forehead. 
And then I'm just going to do like a big patch on his back. So I used that W5 first and then blended that out with the W3. And then I'm going to let that dry and then I'll add a few little tiger stripes on top. But before I get to that, I'm just going to go back to my W00 and use that to kind of soften the edges of those patches so it kind of fades into the white areas. And then once that has dried for maybe like 60 seconds, I'll come in with that W7. I'm using the very tip of that marker so I can get thin little stripes. And I'm gonna bring those three down his forehead and then a few down his back and then up his tail. And then I wanted to color in all of their noses. So I chose R20 for those. I just love kitties with pink noses. And I'll also add some color to the insides of all of their ears. I'm gonna add the R20 on the outer edge and then R11 to blend that out on the inner edge. And then I'm also going to give them each some rosy cheeks. So I'll do the R20 first in a little oval shape on the cheek area. And then I'm gonna grab that R11 and just trace around the outer edge of that and soften that into the rest of the fur. Then I'm going to do the cardboard box and I chose E30, E31, and E33 for that. So I'm just adding a bit of E33 on the bottom edge and then going a little bit up on the sides. And I'll do the same for the lid. And by the way, that this side up stamp is separate. I decided to stamp that on there because this is supposed to be a storage box full of all of the Christmas decorations. So I thought that would be a fun touch to have that on there. And I purposely only stamped that one time. I normally stamp all of my images out twice with my Misty to make sure that they're really dark and bold. But I only did that this side up with a little arrow once so it wouldn't be quite as dark so it would look a little bit more faded like it really would be on a cardboard box. So for the inside of that box I'm just using E44 and E47 to make it look dark and shadowy inside. And then I'm going to start doing my red elements. So I chose R24, R29, and R39 for that. I just love this combo for Christmas. It is the perfect Christmas red. It's got those darks with the R39, and then the R29 is like just the most gorgeous, perfect red. And then the R24 has just a bit of brightness to it, so it really just makes things almost glow. So I did the little Santa hat up in the top corner, and then I'm doing some of the bulbs on the strings of lights. I'm just skipping over every third one. So one red and then two skipped over and then the next one red and so on. And just picked a different place to start on each of those strands so that they wouldn't all have a red bulb at the end. So I'm going to just fill those in with those three shades, doing those all at once since they're really small. And then I'm going to continue with some of my other images. Since there's so much going on in this scene, I decided to keep my color palette relatively simple. Aside from the neutrals with the cats and the box, I'm just going to have three colors going on in this scene. It's going to be red, green, and gold. So I'm doing one of the gifts with a red bow and then another one of the gifts with the red wrapping paper. Since there's three gifts, I can alternate those colors for each of those items. And I'm just making sure to add a little shading at the bottom of the box and then also on the bottom edge of the lid and then a little shadow underneath the bow. So I did pull off the other end of my R29, just removing that cap because it looked like it might get a little leaky on me. So that kind of just staved off any issues. So I'm just finishing up here with two more items. I'm gonna do one of these ornaments to be solid red 
and then the one right next to it, I'm going to do the center stripe in red. So I just put the shading on the right and the highlight on the left, just like I did with the ball. And then I'm going to move on to my gold combo. And for that, I chose YR20, YR21, and YR23. So I'm going to start with the strands of lights and with that YR23, I'm just going to do the bulb that is to the right of the red. So wherever the red is, I'm going to follow that with a gold. And um, for that third one that's right under the caps, I started with the gold because that would be where it would be in the sequence and then just blended um, to one side so that there would be a little bit of a dark side and a little bit of a highlight. I'm also going to do the star for the top of the tree in gold. So I added my shading to the underside of the star and I'm blending toward the top and also making sure to do the bottom little stand part. I'm gonna do a gold bow on the red gift at the bottom and just same way, um, adding that shading down at the bottom edge of each part of that box. So at the bottom and then the bottom part of the lid and then to the center of the bow. And then I'll do um, the round box. I'm gonna do that in a gold gift wrap as well. So just adding that darkest shade first and a little shading to the edges at the top and then blending up with the YR21 and finishing with the YR20. I do think this combo works fairly well for gold. It can be tricky to find a combo that really reads as gold, but I think this one is my favorite. So I'm finishing up this combo with one more ornament and then I'm going to switch to my greens. And I chose G14, G16, and G19. I wanted a green that was more on the blue spectrum than yellow. I wanted like a cool toned green. So these work great for that. So I just used a little of the G19 for the darkest, blended out with the G16, and then I'll use the G14, which really lightens and brightens this combo up. So I think that worked well for those light bulbs. And then I'm just going to finish up these last few items. I'm going to do the round Christmas ornament and then also the one with the stripe across it in these combos and making sure to just put the shading on the right hand side and the highlight on the left, just like with um, the rest of the ornaments. And then I'll color in the Christmas wrap for the small box with the red bow and then I'm going to do the bow on the gold gift in this green combo as well. So you can kind of see how even though I've got so many images having that color palette really simplified into just those three colors plus the neutrals really just pulls everything together and makes it look like it belongs together in a scene. I'm gonna go back to my W1 to color in the white of my Santa hat. I forgot to do that earlier. And then I'm going to switch to my Christmas tree. I did the red and the trunk off screen. I just used the same red combo that I had been using. And the trunk is the same combo that I use for the inside of the cardboard box. So for the tree, I wanted to do um, a different tone since I had the blue greens going on with the rest of the ornaments and things. I wanted to do a little bit more of a yellow green. So I'm doing a base layer of the entire tree with YG05, just starting at the bottom edge and flicking up toward the top. And then I'm actually going to flip this image upside down. I just find it easier to flick that way. So do whichever way is comfortable to you but I'm using the YG07 to come from the bottom edge or the top edge, I guess, of each of those little sections and just flicking in some color. And then I'm going to darken that up with the YG09. 
and I'm just doing some very simple little coloring here. This Christmas tree is not going to be a prominent image. It's really going to be in the background. So I want it to look nice, but I don't want to spend like forever on it because it's not the main focus. So I blended back out with the YG07 and then went back to my YG09 and added a few more precise flicks. I've changed my handle of the marker to be more uh, perpendicular so that I get those nice thin streaks. And then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm gonna choose a print from the Let It Shine Snowflakes 6x6. Six six. I'm gonna choose this red print with the tiny white snowflakes. I'm also gonna add in a wood grain cardstock piece and a white strip to be my floor and baseboards and trim those out with the large stitch rectangle stackables. Then I'm going to take the Spooktacular stamp set and I'm going to mask off the word Halloween in the sentiment that says have a perfect Halloween. So it's just going to say have a perfect. And I'm just masking off that bottom word with some post-it tape. Then I ink up that sentiment, remove the post-it tape so I don't get that ink on the cardstock panel, and then press that down into place. And then I'm going to take the word Christmas from Bah Humbug, and that is almost the exact same font as the word Halloween was. So I stamped that down in some lobster ink and masked off the rest of that sentiment as well. Then I took one of the flirty frames and lined that up right over top, and I'm going to ink that up and stamp that down so it'll kind of look like a picture frame. So I'm just using my Twiddler's Nook uh, pressure pal to make sure that I have a good impression. And then I will color that and die cut that out. And in the meantime, I'm gonna stamp an insert for the inside of my card. And I'm using Warm Winter Wishes plus a little um, scarf from Bah Humbug. And then I'm going to do a lazy mask and um, add this little cat from the Spooktacular stamp set once again because I had already used all three of the cats from the Perfectly Wicked so I wanted a different cat and since I was already using the stamp set I just decided this one would do. So I stamped him out but um, it did kind of cut off his front foot there. So to hide that I'm actually going to add a little gift right in front and it didn't cover it up completely, but it makes it a little bit less noticeable that that foot is missing. So I'm going to start assembling now that I have all of my pieces together. I'm using a piece of chili pepper cardstock from Lawn Fawn as my card base. And I just scored and folded that to a standard size card with a top fold. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I'm going to glue my pattern paper to cover the entire front of that. So that's going to be my wallpaper. And then I'll add the wood grain piece for the floor and the white strip for my baseboard. I've been doing this quite a bit this holiday season just because it makes such quick and easy inside scenes. Um, I just really love it. And especially when you just really want the focus to be on the images, this really just kind of fades into the background and it's just so quick and easy to do. So I did cover up quite a bit of that red cardstock. I probably could have trimmed that down and saved the bottom half of it, but I didn't think of it at the time. And then I'm going to put that Christmas tree over on the right hand side, close up to that baseboard, because I need a lot of room down in front for all of my little cats and all the mischief that they are getting into. Then I'm going to work quickly to get this little picture frame down for my sentiment on the left. I had to tuck it back behind the tree so I needed to work quickly because that liquid glue does dry very fast. Then I'm going to take the standing cat and insert him down in the box. I did use the little die that comes with the Holiday Helper stamp set to die cut the opening into that box so that I could slide him in and I'm going to place him in the center of my scene. He's kind of like the main image. So I've got him, and then I've got the little lid 
So I'm going to figure out how I want to position that and then I'll glue that down before that glue dries as well. Then I'm taking the little tiger cat and I'm gluing one of the strings of lights to kind of wrap around her body. So this string of lights is from Cheery Christmas and I like this one because you can wrap it around a lot of things. So I'm going to have her kind of tangled up in that strand because these kitties have gotten into the holiday decorations and are kind of making a mess of things. But as um, I've been told by many cat owners that that is uh, something that cats like to do. So then I'm going to take these three gifts and adhere those down in the background. Uh, there was a lot of space between the top of the box and that picture frame that forms the sentiment. So I want to fill that with some gifts. So I'm going to put two over on the left hand side and then one over on the right to kind of fill in some space over there as well. So I'll just have that smaller gift overlapping the circle gift. And then I'm going to take the little string of lights. This one is from Furry and Bright. And I'm going to add that kind of in the hands of the kitty in the box as she's kind of um, pulling out all those strands that everybody else is getting all tangled up in. And then I'll add the other little kitty down in front. And she is going to be holding a Christmas ornament dangerously over the floor, playing with those things to see how they spin and you know, just kind of having fun there. So then I was trying to figure out where to add this other strand of lights. And I kind of like the look of it connecting to the other one behind the kitty in the box. So I'm just going to tuck that over there as if it's like one long string. And then I have the star for the tree and I'm going to add that right up at the top. And then there's just a couple more little things here. I have the Santa hat. That's going to go on the kitty in the box since she's our main image. So I'll just pop that on her head. And then I have the last three ornaments. I decided to put two on the tree to make it look as if somebody had been trying to get these decorations up and perhaps the kitties have knocked some of them down. So I definitely wanted to have one of the ornaments on the floor. I couldn't decide which one to do, but I didn't want the green one right next to the green ornament that was in the kitty's hand. So I decided to put that one on the tree and then the gold one on the floor, kind of in that empty space in the middle there. And then of course I had to add a bit of sparkle. So I grabbed my favorite Stardust Stickles and I'm going to add some of that to the star on top of the tree and to the ornaments as well. And this bottle seems to keep getting clogged. So I just used a pin to kind of clear that out and then um, squeeze that out again. And I'm going to add it to uh, the white of the Christmas hat and then also to all of the bows on the gifts. I'm going to add it to each of the light bulbs and make them sparkle a little bit too. So just real quick and easy going across all of the ones that are exposed. And then I'll add it to the little gold ornament and the stripe on the green ornament. So I will pick that up to the camera so you can see how that catches the light. And I'll give you another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one with these naughty Christmas kitties. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to check out day nine of the previous two years of holiday card series, those are on screen right now. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.